final thing we're going to look at in these videos is putting best fit curves, also called trend lines, onto graphs. So let's just first talk a little bit more about general graphing practices. So when you're graphing a function, assuming it's a continuous function, which is almost always true in the sciences, then you draw a curve. And that curve is implying that at any value of the independent variable, we know what the value of the function would be. And if we know the mathematical form of the function, then we ought to know that. However, with data, you do not draw a line through or from point to point. Think about what that would mean. It would imply that we know that if we do a measurement at some value of the independent variable, then we can predict what the data would be that we would measure. But in general, we don't know that, in particular because there will be measurement uncertainty, but also because while we may believe there is some underlying function, we might not know what it is. Also, look at the sort of curve, if you can call it that, that you tend to get when you connect the points. It's zigzaggy. We don't generally expect that physical phenomena behave that way. We would usually expect some sort of a smooth curve. So we never do this. You don't connect points on graphs of data. However, what you often do is draw what's called a best fit line or a trend line or best fit curve or something like that that goes through it. When we do this, we are stating a hypothesis. We're saying that we believe that underlying the data is some function and that this best fit curve is our best estimate of what that underlying function is and that the reason the data doesn't fall right on it is because of measurement uncertainty. But because there's measurement uncertainty, we actually are not certain of that line or curve either. Calculating the uncertainty in the parameters of the best fit curve is well beyond this course, so we won't get into that. And in fact, we will generally rely on internal functions in software to generate our best fit curves for, you, for us. In more advanced courses, like a statistics course, you'll learn some of the theory for how we actually calculate these. So let's now see how to insert a trend line or a best fit line into a graph in a spreadsheet. So I'm going to graph Vy versus T. This is free fall data, just like you'll have in two weeks. So I'm going to select the T column, and I'm going to hold down Control and select the Vy column, and I'm going to insert an XY scatter plot. Okay, so I've inserted the graph. And I am now going to double click so that I'm in the graph and can do things with it. I'm going to select the data and I'm going to right click and insert trend line. And now you have to know what function should describe the data. Note that this one looks like a straight line, and so linear is a good guess. But in general, you're not just guessing based on the shape. You have to know, based on the underlying physics, what function should describe it. In this case, it definitely should be linear. If you don't know why, well, think about it, and hopefully in another week or two, you'll see why. We will almost never want to force the intercept to be any particular value but we will generally want to show the equation, and you can show the coefficient of determination. That's just telling you how good the quality of the fit is, and I'll leave it at that. And so there we have our best fit curve function, and the best fit curve itself is not terribly visible. There it is. It's actually hiding underneath all the data. But what we're actually interested in here is the function itself. And I could now do some formatting to perhaps make the points of the data smaller so that the line can be seen. So maybe I'll do that. So this is something you will do quite frequently. It won't always be a linear function, 
Like I said, you have to know what the underlying function ought to be.